In a previous video, I went over how to pull down my configuration files so that you have my configuration of NeoVim on your machine, and you can use all the features which I demonstrate in some of my previous videos for writing LaTeX documents um, and doing academic writing. Um, in that in that other video, so where is it? It's just down here. Um, you just clone um, my configuration. So here, here it is. So you go into the configuration uh, folder, you initialize git, and then you pull down my configuration with this. You're adding basically this destination, my, you know, my GitHub repository, and then you're pulling it down onto your local machine and then doing a few other small things. So, um, so that will get you my configuration. But let's say you want to start to make some changes and you want to save those changes um, in a way, you know, you want to create basically your own repository, which you can kind of continue to update and evolve and so on, and perhaps share with others. So what you'll need to do, um, there's two situations I'm imagining. One is that you've already gone through these steps and you've pulled down my configuration, and now you're in the process of maybe making some changes. Um, so, and you'd like to save those changes on your own repository. So in that situation, what you're going to want to do is um, go into the terminal and you're going to cd into that same folder um, um, config yes uh, and okay so I'm in there and you know you're going to have you're, you're going to see okay git is tracking something at least if you um, if you're using fish and what you're going to want to do is you want to remove that um, destination so you're going to do uh, git remote and then remove an origin okay and that's going to basically delete this um, destination um, I'm not going to do that uh, and then what you're going to do is you do git remote uh, dash dash v and you shouldn't see these anymore so once you do the remove origin both of these should disappear um, and basically what that is doing is it's decoupling uh, your sort of your git history on your local machine from this destination. Um, and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into your GitHub, you're going to create a new repository. So for me, you know, I would actually, I, I have not signed in here um, purposefully for the next part of this video, but you know, you'd have to sign in, you'd have to go into your repositories, you'd have to click new repository, um, and then you'd have to, um, then you'd, it would give you a new address and for that repository and you'd say you know git remote add origin and then you would type in that new address and that address will now be your repository not my repository so it'll you know have your name attached to the end and that's nice because then you can then do you know git uh, push origin master and that will push your configuration whatever you have on your machine um, up to your own repository and then as you make changes, you can continue to push them up to your repository and keep them up to date. Um, so that's one situation that you might be in. The other situation is you've not yet um, pulled down my configuration, in which case, um, let's go back here. So here's, here's the configuration You're saying, okay, here's all the different files I'd like to pull down onto my machine, but I wanna do so not where I end up linked you know, to my repository, you wanna end up linked to your own repository. Okay, so the way to do this is you're going to go here, fork. Um, and yeah, it wants me to sign in, of course, and if I do sign in, I'm not going to be able to fork my own repository. Um, but what you're going to want to do is fork my repository. What that's going to do is it's going to basically copy this repository onto into your GitHub. So now you're going to have something called config, or you know perhaps you can rename it, but this is a good name for it in your repository. Okay, and then once you do that, then you can go, you can click code and you can get this link. And, but this, instead of saying my name here, it'll say your name, but it has all the same files that, that I have here. Um, okay, so once you do that, um, you're gonna copy that link and you're gonna go in here and you're gonna go into your, you're gonna do, run the same command, cd config, so you're in the config folder and you're gonna have to initialize git. So I've already initialized git here. Um, but you'll have to run git init. Um, and that will initialize git, and then after you've done that, um, you can then do um, uh, git 
add remote uh, origin. Actually, I'm sorry, it's git remote add origin. And then you would copy in whatever link um, is given to you um, in that repository, that little, um, yeah, that we just saw. So, so anyways, that, that is the process you would do in order to link your own repository. Um, and then once you've linked your repository, then you can do um, git pull origin master. And so what you're doing basically is you're linking, um, you're creating a, you know, you're initializing git, you're linking git to the repository which you forked from me, which is basically just a, a copy of my repository, but onto your GitHub. And then you're pulling from your GitHub down onto your machine. And what's nice about that is that then, say you make some changes to your local machine, you can then, you know, having already pulled all of those things down, then you can do a git push origin master. And you can start to push all those files, all those changes up to GitHub and stay up to date. Um, so those are the two different situations I'm imagining um, that you might be in. Um, and this is at least a first, a first place to begin. So once, once you've pulled down all the changes in one way or another, um, I do go through this in much more detail in some of my other videos. Um, I'm sort of discussing some of the main differences in, in forking something as opposed to cloning something, but otherwise it's, it's very similar. Um, okay, so once you have all of these files onto your machine, um, whether you've cloned it or you've forked it or however, um, now we're gonna start to make some changes to them. So you, if you go into, yeah, let's, yeah, so I, I already have it open here, but this is, um, this is the git init file, and you can see that right here. So if I open up, um, it's in nvim, and then in git init. Okay, so this is this file here, um, and this is the sort of the central configuration file, and it's going to source all these other different files. Um, and so in the rest of this video series, I'm going to go through and discuss the configuration for each of these. Um, along with all the different mappings that you might have. Um, and those mappings are all sort of outlined in this cheat sheet here. And so you'll have copies of all of this on your machine. And so if you change your mappings, um, I highly recommend that you also just update this cheat sheet so that you know what you've done. Um, and you know sort of which mappings you've added, which extend beyond the sort of standard mappings that come uh, just built into Vim. Uh, and this is just a good way to stay organized and to yeah keep track of, of how your system works.